everything between the lines. It's really the same command, just work different. Uh, and then you can come back here and you can uh, uh, curve, curve from objects. Uh, well, this is as good as any, duplicate edge. Okay, so now we got the shape of a of a, a control uh, panel or bulkhead, and we're gonna end the command. And if I've been a real good person, okay, joined them, uh, but it's three open curves. And uh, what that's gonna mean is that uh, you get a real close look on something. Well, that is joined. I wonder why it's got three curves. Yeah, that's one continuous line around there. So that's printable. Okay, there's some kind of discontinuity <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, knowing how this was drawn, I would not put a line in there to fill that. There's actually a, a space uh, where the the two halves weren't pushed clear together. Uh, like if I would, if I would have, and I could still do it, I can take one whole side of the boat and make a make a group out of it. And then move it from till this touches that, and that would give me continuity, and then it would be a, a smooth curve. But this this is just a, a tutorial. So we have one side, we have another side, and I'm guessing that it's drawn a line somewhere I didn't intend and made a curve. Lines are curves in CAD, that's what they call them. Couldn't tell you why. Well, it's drawn a curve here, from there to there. So, uh, uh, when I would, uh, if I would do, if I was doing this, I would uh, select the whole thing, have it make uh, all all the edges at once, single command. But some some programs don't do that. If I looked at the edge and made a window that covered an inch thick of the boat, but covered that edge I want, I'll get the edge and I'll get all these lines going back. And then I just delete those lines and I end up with the, with the shapes I want. Anyway, uh, I don't care if you're doing a sailboat or a, a 38 foot cruiser and you need bulkheads, just slice the model up. Make a copy and slice it up. And you see how it fits together? You can look around on the inside and see what it looks like inside. Uh, it's like a house floor plan. You can, you can go inside the house and then look around in the rooms. It doesn't look like there's uh, much space in the front of this boat that that's enclosed, but you can see there's a pretty good amount of air in there. Uh, and all what these bulkheads really do is, I'm going to make this a two-piece video. It's already shot for being a one one piece. Well, I could I could upload one piece, but nobody looks at them now because they're too long. So uh, I'd get zero views and be wasting my time. But if you put a bulkhead in every place that you have uh, one drawn, um, those uh, would be welded up. Uh, they can be done welded up. It's just harder. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't have to put foam in it if you have like uh, 20 air cells welded up and you'd have a little vent hole up here so if you got uh, a hole in it and got it full of water, 
you can stand it on end or flip it upside down and the water will be, then be on the bottom. The reason you put your drains up there instead of the drains down here, if uh, you got the water in the boat by turning it over, then uh, the air bubbles would come out and it would fill with water. May not do it in two or three minutes, but it would do it overnight before you could get, get the thing drugged ashore. Uh, so if you if you put your holes up here, unless you have a hole in in the, in the little box, uh, and there's no end in this box because it's it's cut in two on both ends. It's not gonna let me. Oh, so this one this one won't show it because it comes to a point. It's actually enclosed clear to there. That's one solid thing. Huh. Anyway, if you put your thing there and it was upside down and the air could get out and it could fill it water and it would sink. If enough of them had holes in them. If you've connected all of them together so you can drain out of one place and have a pipe plug in it, then they'd all get full of water. If you put it on top, no water gets in it uh, except the one you punched a hole in. And uh, uh, unless that point of the boat is completely underwater, if, you have, if you've got it 90% underwater, then you could... Uh, Water could go from one to the next like it did on Titanic, and that boat sunk. Even if it had water tight compartments, they sunk it anyway. Wrong command. There's a lot of insight into what you're... If you have a mental picture that... Like, I had a mental picture I wanted this bottom to have a, uh, you know, 18 inches to ride on, they don't want it a real gradual slope up so it wouldn't pound on it. And then I wanted this part here, the blue part, to be out of the water so it wouldn't have any drag. But I wanted a lot of volume back here uh, to keep the, the back end floating. So, uh, you know, you have these, um, these mental pictures. And if you slice it up and you have not got what you thought you were making, you can either change it to what you were thinking or look at it and, and maybe... Uh, sometimes you've got a better design by accident than you started out with. And that happens uh, fairly frequently. Anyway, this is a, this is a tunnel hole boat. And, uh, well, we'll just post it here if I can get, get anything to upload. I've been about five days on the one on uh, showing concrete load paths in a house, how to make sure you've got them and that they're going the right directions and how the, how the ends connect and where the, where the weights ought to be transferring from one to the next. Because uh, we, we, when, when we're not on lockdown, we're building a concrete house. And we got the structure up to the roof done. We're on finishing and uh, rendering, skim coat, uh, all those fun things. Uh, got stuck in the middle of the dirty kitchen, got the floor, and then, uh, you know, everything shut down. Can't get to the hardware store. Not allowed to work anybody if we could get materials, so that's dead in the water. So I'm just playing with this stuff. I can do it without going out of the house. Um, these uh, these designs, uh, everything would need refined, I would think. From from unless you're just going for what it looks like. If all you care is what it looks like, and you're not going to calculate uh, residual buoyancy and everything like that, if you just want to something to ride around in front of your neighbor with. Uh, you could build this. <laughs> you could build this out of plywood, but if, if you put 150 horsepower on a plywood boat, it's going to have to be pretty thick plywood. And at that point, the steel costs less. Um, and it can take that hammering. It's malleable. Uh, the wa water is a very hard surface when you get up to 150 miles an hour. That's why it's, it's only uh, a little bit of... Uh, 12 inches long and three inches wide here and, and uh, maybe eight or nine inches by three inches or by uh, uh, 36 in the back. The rest of it's not touching the water. It's just flying. Uh, uh, they turn sharp enough. Uh, if you haven't got sides on your boat up here, because uh, you turn too sharp, it's going to throw you. Uh, either you're wearing seat belts, which is not a good idea in this kind of a boat. You really don't want shoulder harness and seat belts, unless you have an enclosed cockpit. If you've uh, made this top out of a uh, top out of polycarbonate and it's really clamped on, or if this is breakaway, if the part you sit in is uh, is a plug-in, like an ejection seat kind of deal, which they use on the big hydroplanes, then you want to close it. 
because uh, it's a serious bang when you hit something like water at its speed. It's going to probably knock you unconscious. So you want a, a life jacket that turns you over and makes you float. And uh, wait till you come to, I guess. Um, anyway. Not a bad way to spend a, um, about eight days. If you have a MIG welder, about eight days. Because the hard part is, is making the parts the right shape so all the edges match up. Once you have that, uh, it's like a triangle. You take three lines and put the corners together, you can only make one triangle. You can't make anything. You can make a mirror image of it. You can flip it over, but you can't make but one one shape out of those three lengths. High school geometry. So if, if you have all these, these shapes, special shapes with curved edges, and you stick all the edges together, uh, there's no way for it to have a twist front to back or, or be bowed like a canoe. When you pull those edges together, you get this shape. There's no option. If you've made a part wrong, you have to take some off or add some to it. And that's where the, the advantage of the computers comes in. If you didn't have uh, uh, something that would unroll, you can have an axis on this and you can look at your end view and rotate it till this panel is uh, horizontal and print it. Uh, it. Because it's curved up and down this way, looking straight down on it, uh, it'll be the shape, except it will be short. So uh, <clears throat> uh, you have to take that into account. Your whole boat will be shorter because you're doing that. But you could make, make uh, uh, prints. Um, if you're going to do something like that, you probably want to draw lines across your your uh, thing here. Um, oh, eight inches. Uh, make a print, and then uh, anything that's uh, more than a sixteenth off the eight inches, take scissors, cut it to move it apart to its uh, eight inches on the on the last piece, the one you're measuring. <clears throat> Tape it back together, and just do that from one end to the other. Uh, <clears throat> you may be adding three quarters of an inch someplace if the, if the curve was steep. But you can put it back together, and it would be uh, pretty much the same shape I get. Uh, they figure on adding about uh, four evenings to the build. You go from eight days to 12 days that quick, just for that. For nothing else, just that. But you can, you can flip it, to uh, just rotate it until... Uh, uh, if you draw a line from a corner and you ask it where the dimension or the angle from here that line is, if it reads zero, zero, or you can, if you can rotate until this point gets to the near point there, and that'll put it right on level, you can do it that way. Uh, but you have to do every panel that way. Um, and one like this, you're going to be cutting it in two about every two inches up here, so you have to have a line about every two inches on your pattern. You put the lines on before you uh, do the print. You can't do them after because they won't be the uh, eight inches apart, All right? So you put your lines on there for you before you do that. <clears throat> I've only done that one time. Uh, it was tedious, and it worked. Uh, I did it I, I, uh, one time on the computer. I, I printed the, uh, the thing, and then uh, I sliced the, the flat thing at every line and got a uh, two lines that were eight inches apart, and I just stick that on the end and move this piece to it to a touch that line and moved it down until that piece touched the line. And that only took uh, about a half hour to the part times like 40 parts. It took forever. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it takes some looking to, to pick out the 3D program you want. But once you get it, I use Rhino 3D by McNeil. Uh, there's no... Uh, um, yearly charge like uh, my SolidWorks is $2,200 a year just for the license you have to renew it every year and everything like finite and ele element analysis and uh, hydrostatics and, and aerodynamics every other package you've added into that is also going to price every year so some years you don't want FEA you just don't pay for it You know they don't like it, they'll send you notices screw them uh, you buy it, it ought to be yours. I and mean, they, they charge so much for it. Um, 
AutoCAD is not as uh, bad on, on uh, the licensing. Uh, I've tried, uh, I used AutoCAD 14 for about 20 years. Uh, I started out, it was AutoCAD 3, and I upgraded until I got to 12, and then the upgrades from 12 to 14 seemed to me to be unstable. Um, you have to pay for the upgrades. <clears throat> so I clean slated it and bought a, a, a fresh copy of 14 and used that, uh, of the 20 years, I used that about seven or eight years till I started designing airplanes and it just would not loft curves. I tried AutoCAD 2010 and a couple other ones, and AutoCraft Inventor, AutoCAD Inventor. None of them will loft a curve in three dimensions. I don't give a damn who you are, they will not loft two curves that are not in the same plane and they're a different shape. And that's a failure. This thing here, you can make any shape you want, and if it doesn't loft, you've got options to, to straighten it around to where it will, or you can cut it in pieces and, and loft sections at a time and stick them back together. But you, there's, you, you don't get stuck where you can't finish a project for not being able to loft. It will fix it. Okay. Uh, if, if you had fun and it was entertaining or comical or you might have learned something, uh, you can give me a thumbs up, provided anybody actually watched this. Um, you can, if, if, if you thought it was too this or too that, you can give me a thumbs down. And I only have like eight comments on the entire videos I've ever done, but if you give me a thumbs down, and I haven't got one of those yet either, but if I get a thumbs down, I'd appreciate a comment on what is so terrible about it. I've been asking people to do that since the beginning, but nobody's ever done it. One guy, he gave me a comment, and he also gave me a thumbs up, <laughs> but he gave me a comment that the video wasn't clear. I uh, need a better camera. <clears throat> the thing is, when you post on YouTube, uh, the first thing that goes up, if you look at a video the day it's posted, like you have that notification bell, and you go to the video right away and look at it, you're going to get a standard definition video because that's what they do, 144p. And it'll be grainy and it won't look really well and it's hard to watch as a movie, you can't read text on the screen, all, that, all the problems you got with 144p. Give it three days. They reprocess it as soon as they uh, post it into the highest resolution that you sent them. Every video I ever sent them is 1080p because that's what the camera does, 1080. <clears throat> so if, if your um, player is saying 144, if you look at it, it'll say SD for standard definition. Just go away and come back in three days, you know, and it will be high definition. It'll change. Mine takes so long to post that a lot of times by the time I get it actually uploaded, it's in high definition. It's, they, they do it simultaneously, I guess. Fastest I can upload uh, a half hour video is uh, 32 hours. Um, one of them took nine days. I don't know why it is. I've done everything I can do. Anyway, if you, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, or just, if you didn't, don't, don't do anything. Uh, Y'all have a nice day, and Lord be with you. Okay, off.